My parents came from England as World War I soldier settlers. I was three months old, and of course that was hard times, were very hard because the depression was on, the conditions were so hard, we were so poor. You know, we used to go to school with bread and, bread and dripping sandwiches and uh, we didn't have shoes. It was so hard and, and it just became too much for Mother. She packed us all up, the uh, four youngest children, and took us to the home and said, now, uh, as soon as I'm better, I'll come and pick you up. But she never did. She died. And then when the war broke out in 1939, and so what Dad did, he put his age uh, down to join the Army and he put my age up to join the Navy. His words were, I'm going to put you in the Navy, son, because I know you'll be safe there. And I just accepted that. I turned 16 June the 8th, and in July they called me. I was posted to HMAS Hobart. I hadn't seen a warship before. Going across the gangway, you couldn't imagine it. The whole ship was manually operated, so that's why you had a crew of upwards of 700. So I was a quarter deckman, and you manned the guns that are there. Well, I was 16 and a half, actually, when I joined the ship, but I was still doing a man's job. When we went over to the Middle East, we stopped on the entrance to the Suez Canal. But about one o'clock in the morning, uh, we had a very heavy air raid. And that was really frightening. I'd never seen an air raid before. Once I joined Hobart, I had a new family. In my three and a half years, the ship became my home the ship's company became my family. The sea was calm. It was, the sun had just set uh, when there's this blinding flash and the, sh and the ship just rocked up in the air and rocked down again. That was when the torpedo hit the safety valves actually blew off with the big bang. The, all the power went off. My job and my offsider had to go down below, put emergency power onto an oil pump. When the explosion hit, those four of the, my crew, they, I think they were all blown over the side. The guy that took my place died. He hadn't been on the ship very long. and. And I always think about that man. Well, I think about the others too, but more so the guy that took my place, Sable Simon Phillips. We were in Adelaide when the bomb was dropped and peace broke out. There were these great big celebrations and I felt a loss. I felt a loss. I've got another six years to go and there's going to be no more excitement for me. That's what I felt. When I left the Hobart there, tears streamed down my eyes because that was my home. I didn't want to leave it. <laughs> I've been volunteering for the Moore Memorial for 20 years. I look at the galleries and I look at the plaques on the wall. My own brother, from Angal is on the wall. I never saw him after I left home. I go and say hello to him, and I go and look at the Hobart, the Australia, the Sydney, the Yarra, all friends. I look at this, and I just, I just pray for them. They were the biggest part of my life. They were my family, and the war memorial is their home. Those names on the wall. 
They mean so much to me. Thank you.